capability. That is one of the one of the the issues that uh, one of the challenges I think that the MPA is that we were not really accountable for our decisions or not held accountable sufficiently. And I mean, of course, we account to Parliament. We go and you know, and, and so in that way, account to the people of South Africa. But in many ways, I think the NPA was not sufficiently held to account. And so we want to be an accountable institution that accounts in a very real and meaningful way to the people of South Africa for our decisions, for many of our decisions, but importantly, uh, our decisions not just to prosecute, but to not to prosecute, which has often been, been the, the issue in recent times. We lost, if it's not more than 800 now, prosecutors in this period, across from the junior prosecutors in the district court, but more so your senior people, so people that were retiring with a lot of experience, expertise, we were not able to fill these posts. And this had a devastating impact on the organization. that we are about to complete the forensic <laughs> investigation that um, at least explains almost to the cent where, where the money went and, and where it's ended up and um, charges are now being formulated around that understanding. Um, I mean really the question was do we separate out the two cases uh, mm. because it seems to be growing into a big case. There has been a push um, to try and be more transparent and, and trying to be, uh, you know, get financial institutions to be more accountable for who they do business with and how they do business. Um, and so we will use those um, policies and procedures that are put in place to assist our investigation. And we talk about corruption a lot because that is what people want to hear about. And that's what you know, is going to build confidence and is, and we understand the impact that the NPA can make in terms of turning this country around with some really good focused prosecutions. But we can't forget that we've still got murders, rapes, robberies, sexual and gender based crime, house breaking, cyber crime, and a whole range of other crimes that the NPA also still has to, has to deal with. And we are looking at how we can utilize the legal framework to be more creative in even perhaps charging apartheid as crime against humanity. I feel very confident that there's a lot of good in the NPA, that at the end of the day, you know, the culture of goodness is going to sort of kill off any other people in the NPA that may have intentions that are contrary to the new vision. The new. So I feel quite confident that we have sufficient good people that want to see the NPA succeed, that want it to be the employer of choice that it was in 1998.